Hey friends and welcome to Praying with Charles. Today we are flipping the axles on this camper. So what that's going to do is give us some height and it's going to make sure that those tires aren't digging into the wheel wells like they are right now. So friends, we're going to do a couple little measurements real quick, show you that it's mostly level, not quite yet. We're on a slope to begin with so it's kind of misleading but we're going to level it up and start taking the wheels off and the axles off get over and get some brackets welded on and it's just going to be a really fun little episode. So hang with us as we flip the axles and gain about maybe six inches of height. So this is kind of a before picture and I hope to get as accurate as I can on the after picture but you can see about how high off the camper is from the ground. Again the driveway is at a bit of a slope uh, but I'm seeing several different spots on the camper showing level. So here's the front step. This is showing level. Uh, this is how you get into the camper. And now we're gonna move to the front frame and I'll show you again. And there's a little level guys and this isn't necessarily a straight up how to. We're not gonna get very technical, but again, we're showing level. So now let's get out the tape measure and see what kind of height we have from the ground to the top of the frame. From the ground to the top of the frame, we're showing just about 19 inches. So. 18 and three quarter inch uh, Of course, this is on the ground and dirts and stuff like that, but we're showing approximately 19 inches on the front so now we're back at that step and at the top of that step before we raise it is About 11 and a quarter so friends now we're at the back bumper and it's 12 and three quarter inches at the top of the back bumper So I'm excited to see how much height we gain when we flip these axles, without further ado, let's get in and take these two tires off. And the other side, we'll get and take those off after we jack this up and make it really safe. Because uh, I want to be able to walk in and around the camper while we're waiting for this axle flip. At this point you can see that the wheels are off the ground. Those lug nuts are just loose, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. That way if something shifts unexpectedly, the wheels will still be able to support the weight of the camper until I feel like it's really safe and able to carry all the weight on these four jacks. Now if you're lusting after my drill already, I don't blame you. Friends, this Milwaukee is the best that they put out right now in the half inch. It can really just take apart tractors and big truck lug nuts, anything that you really want to give it, it'll take it. So I'm going to drop a link to this, guys, if you're interested in it. It's overkill for most people. I was doing some heavy duty stuff on my truck and I just tend to do a lot of this heavy duty stuff. So it's going to come in really handy when we're getting after those leaf springs. but. It's quite expensive, <laughs> so it's a fun toy, but it's becoming more and more necessary. And so as we go down the road with Praying with Charles, this thing is going to be in the bag all the time, just waiting to be used. Friends, with the tires removed, we're going to be dropping the axles now. So what I want to do is take off this bolt right here, that bolt, that one, and then the one on the other side. That's going to drop this whole leaf spring down. That way I can get these bolts right here off with my gun uh, that I'm so happy about because I don't really need to be under there wrenching if I don't have to. So I'm taking off a couple extra bolts, but it's all going to be with the drill 
and not by hand and then those will there's enough clearance from the ground to the frame where those will just slide out and that's actually a good shot you can see that bow in the axle it kind of bows like that we have to keep that bow that's why we're going to be welding new brackets on the top so there's a little bracket right here and we're actually going to be welding a new one on the top so that the instead of sitting on top of the leaf spring the axle is going to be sitting underneath and then we're going to gain the whole distance of the axle the bracket underneath the camper so that's actually how the camper gets lifted Alright friends, mind me while I catch my breath. That was no joke, you know, even with that creeper. It's kind of heavy, but we got them out. And so now I'm going to be flipping them and unbolting these guys here. So now I understand a lot more why the kit came with the bracket that we need. And some new U-bolts. Some new U-bolts, the top plate, and, and locking nuts. We have had to cut through a bunch of that stuff and just do what we had to do to get it off. And I'm so happy that the kit came with all that extra stuff. So we're going to get the last eight bolts off the other side and then this thing is going to be ready for welding. This far and you're still telling yourself I am confused hopefully this will make it a little more clear so this bracket down here is welded on to the axle previously is set with this underneath that bracket so this is the leaf spring and that's what holds the axle to the frame of the trailer so what we're gonna be doing is a brand new uh, bracket is gonna be welded just spot welded on and then this guy has that 
And this guy has a nut on the bottom right there that's going to sit inside that new bracket. And now the axles are going to be underneath the leaf springs rather than on top of it. And so that gives you that much uh, height. So as it was there, now it's underneath. So we're lifting the camper uh, six inches approximately. And so there it is. There's the brand new stuff and the old stuff. I thought you'd enjoy this as much as I do, but with the amount of miles that we're gonna be putting on this camper, it just gives you a little peace of mind knowing that everything is gonna be brand new that matters. Just got back from welding these brackets on. I had a friend named Bob weld them, and guys, he did a fantastic job. His life story alone is an amazing story that probably needs to be told on Praying with Charles, but Bob, thanks so much for welding these on. You did a fantastic job, and now we can move on to the next step. So while I was in town, I actually went ahead and got a few more products that we might need for this. So these are new little bushings that go here on the leaf springs. So what these do is just give it a little bit of protection so it's not rubbing metal on metal. And you can see what happened to the old ones over the years. They've just gone to complete trash. So I was happy I was able to find those. You can see I've hammered them in already, most of them. Uh, I was actually taking this siding off because the wheel wells needed a lot of work. So I did that. I didn't film it for you guys, but a lot of work went into this. You can see I put metal and caulking uh, a little bit overkill. It's still super rough, guys. I wish you could, you probably can just buy a whole new fender, but at this late stage in the game, that's not what we're doing. I wish the camper company would have made a better fender to begin with. Who knows what they're doing nowadays, but uh, each side, so I did the other side the same, had big old cracks. Of course, like I told you guys, where the fender was getting carved out by the wheel, and that's why we're lifting it, so no more of that, but we've also braced it and tucked it back, so it's gonna be super safe, and I'll keep an eye on it from time to time. Another thing that we bought is these little brackets here, so that's gonna replace that one. Uh, all along here and then on the other side. This has been beveled out to a bit of an oval, so I wasn't happy with that. If you look there, it's supposed to be a circle, and it's got beveled out. So, got these guys, and friends, we are ready to start reassembling these axles. I couldn't be happier. Guys, it is done and I have not been more excited to reveal something in a long time. So without further ado, let me get the camera set up and show you that before picture and then here comes the after. Friends, take a look at that. How good is that? We gained much more than I thought. Soon we're gonna rush over and measure the couple spots that we had from before. But guys, just look at how much clearance we're gonna have. Check out every time we go through a gas station, go down a dirt road, go over a speed bump, we are no longer scraping. And guys, that tire is so far from the inside of that fender, it's not even funny. Here we are at the front of the camper and you can see we're level. Now let's get a measurement on there. As we said before, this isn't rocket science, but I'm seeing 23 inches 
at the top of that beam. Back over here at this step, we're showing about 16 and a half inches as we're level, just like we were before. And at the back bumper, we're showing just over 21, 21 and a quarter inches. But again, one of the main reasons we needed to lift this thing is that the tires were actually digging into the top of the fender. Check that out guys. I put this guard back on temporarily. We're gonna take it back off and do some work on it. Do that typical butyl tape and some caulking. Uh, secure the fender on the outside wall a little bit more, but you can see all the work I did inside there. But just look at that clearance we're gonna have. Just because why not, let's throw a tape on there and see how much clearance we have. So we got uh, easily eight inches. So we can hit one heck of a speed bump. I'm telling you, that would be a mean old speed bump. So I'm gonna take you around to the other side now and let's see how it's looking over there. There it is, friends, look how high that is. And now we can actually put the weight distribution slash sway bar hitch on. So we didn't wanna do that before because everything was gonna be measured wrong once we flipped the axles, but now we can put that hitch on the back of my truck, get to a flat parking lot, maybe Walmart or something. Maybe out here if we can find a good flat spot and actually level this thing out so that when we're pulling, it's not swaying or moving or grooving anywhere we don't want it to. So again, we have this off because as you can imagine, there's more work to be done on the siding and the fenders. Here's an example of what we're always dealing with. Some rot in there. But we're gonna have to attach that nice and secure and then this seam right here we're gonna have to take these screws loose all the way up top all the way up top and put some butyl tape behind there put some new screws in make sure they're connecting holding good and then some caulking over the top but here's the little fender piece that goes back on there so we got some more work to do with that but there it is friends look at how good that is I mean, that is just, that's just incredible. Check that out. Well, friends, I'm going to call it there. That seems like just as good a spot as any. We just had an amazing little video here. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're enjoying all this stuff coming out of Praying with Charles. And about, well, when you're watching this video, We'll almost be at the worship conference in Texas a couple days out. So just be praying over us. Pray that the hand of God fall on that place and that people humble themselves in prayer, that they start new relationships with other believers in Christ and that they are able to grow in a mighty way. Pray for our booth. Pray for what we got going on there. Guys, we just thank you so much for hanging on. If you're new by chance and you made it this far in the video, if you would subscribe and hit the bell, that's going to notify you every time we put a new video out. And uh, guys, that's how we're building this channel, bringing more awareness to Christ, to prayer, to understanding that God is still answering prayers here in 2021 for those who put their trust and faith in Him and just say a simple prayer. So friends, as always, until the next video, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May He cause His face to shine upon you. May He be gracious to you. Look upon you with favor and give you peace. Guys, as you press into the word of God, as you press into family, friends who are going to motivate you in Christ, I just know that you're going to grow to the next level and to the next level as we move from holy to holy. I pray that there's a scripture that God puts on your heart and you just start memorizing it this week. I pray that an old friend reaches out to you or that you reach out to them and just encourage them in the name of Jesus. Uh, guys, we love you so much. Until the next video, be blessed, and we'll see you then.